Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel Deb Chanel's 48's World and I am Deb Chanel. Get into it y'all get into it yes I'm coming to you on a Saturday um, January the 11th at 9 45 Eastern Standard Time Zone and I just want to get in a little something something uh, with my family you know what I'm saying my YouTube family yes come on over come on in the house out the rain because it is raining down here in Atlanta Georgia okay we're gonna get into this story yes well it's really not a story it's more of a interview or more of a me breaking out commentary I'm the correspondent over here the owner the CEO of Dale Chanel's 40s world CV YouTube channel okay but I just want to talk about Dr. Heavenly and Funky Dineva and how well they mesh together. I'm like, I ain't telling them to go out there and get their own little show started or whatever. But it sure would bring up Dr. Heavenly's YouTube channel because I think she's still around under 30,000. That's still a good thing for her. But being on a national platform, it should be a lot more higher than that. So y'all go over there and y'all support your girl because she ain't going nowhere with that mouth, honey. She's mouth of the South Almighty. Okay. And I used to not too much care for her, except for when she be saying when she gets in trouble and she needs to have a comeback, she used to always go and say, your mama. <laughs> And I truly, truly, truly enjoyed that setup, how she came across trying to get back with people, especially when she talking about Miss Lucy, which is my Mariah's uh, mother. And when she gets on all the other cast members, she she be calling everybody everything now because she thinks she fine over there. She don't lost all that weight. So she even calling people fat. I'm like, now, now, heavenly, now, heavenly, now, heavenly. We don't need to be calling nobody fat going around now, okay? I'm just saying. But uh, Funky Dineva and uh, her, meaning Dr. Heavenly, did, uh, he came on her YouTube platform and they did did a rendition of basically a recap review of Merit to Medicine uh, re part reunions and how things were transpiring behind the scenes in front of the camera what's the real tea on them basically being close are they close or are they just giving it to us for the show part what's going on and uh, Funky Dineva I'm just going to start calling him Quentin because I was really impressed I knew he was a smart intelligent guy anyway okay and how he got his claim to fame he just was pay playing theatrical type skits and his alter ego was Funky Dineva and Funky Dineva had this persona that she would get on the phone talk to her girlfriend Nessa uh, about this that and the third just gossiping over the telephone with a good best friend you know and that's how he pretty much came to fame he basically uh, had done work with Candy and her Candy Coated Nights when it was on a lower scale. I'm not really into all of that sex talk or whatever. So, um, that's not my shade of tea. Um, but she was, uh, he was over there, you know, building up his clientele because he's originally from Miami, Florida. Both him and Dr. Heavenly have that claim to fame. And he came to Atlanta and tried to get his, uh, entertainment career started. And I think he did really well being here but i think he's moved back to miami or some parts of florida but i think he's saying miami uh so he upgraded himself in florida from a town or a county that he wasn't really proud of or whatever and now he's living it on the high life on the high hog in miami so kudos to him and congratulations for all his endeavors but him and dr hevelin did a little uh recap review of the show married to medicine and they fit together like hand and glove i ain't gonna say it was magical because i don't like using all that kind of stuff it was just very profound and they were in sync with one another so if they wanted to get their own little show going or bravo would do a spinoff with him yeah I, I do concur with him he's probably gonna have to more than likely shelve or put dineva on the show and he needs to get in his uh man's voice and do his commentary as a 
interviewer of different shows, you know, and, and have guests come on his platform or him and Dr. Heavenly platform, and they interview them. Because I never really understood or, un, or, um, or got the gist of why he left Sister Circle. I mean, was it supposed to just be an all-female cast or whatnot? And they were just going to have Funky Dineva up there acting like a woman and giving commentary? I mean, I didn't really know because Sister Circle is still just like a show, like any other show on there. They talk about celebrities. They talk about what's trending in social media. They just have a bigger platform and millions and millions of people watch them. Because half the people that were on Sister circle on the view whatever they ain't if they weren't known in the real celebrity realm of acting whether they were an actress or an actor you know nine times a ten on big screen we didn't know you so a lot of people get in their first um what do you call it first dance i would say in the entertainment industry and half the time it's just like doing what i do on a normal basis supplementing my income it's getting on the tube finding your own uh, spot your space your own niche or lane I should say and getting people to gravitate to you because they're like kindred spirits they have the same ideologies that you have they have the same viewpoints and then you have the ones that you know fight against you for whatever reason and that's okay too but they have a liking to your spirit or they have a liking to watching you and helping you grow and then you're and sharing your videos and um, liking your videos and it just goes global because you know I may have 10 people watching me, but those 10 people can reach out to their friends and it just becomes a vast amount of people liking me or disliking me and tuning in and making my platform grow. So that's the whole gist of the matter when you make a YouTube channel and you're being a content creator and you have your own content you want to bring out and a certain part of a, a platform you want to build on a foundation that you started uh on and it just goes from there and hopefully doors will open up for you or not but you know like i said this is my su supplemental income but um i love talking i have a gift for gab um no person is a stranger to me if they come encounter with me i'm very lovable i'm very personable and quentin probably he are, he's already known out there in the com comedy world, in the entertainment world. And definitely if you come to Atlanta and you get it, get it, get it on this YouTube. Or you know people in the industry. You know, you got Tyler Perry down here. You got movie companies moving down here. Just a whole uh, plethora of uh, wealth down here in Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of people don't know because... They come from different states, different countries or whatever, and they just get caught up in the entertainment life down here instead of really feeling what Atlanta's all about, getting to know the culture, getting to know the people, and then branch out and try to, uh, you know, go to where we know celebrities hang out when they go come in town or who they network with. Because, you know, we definitely have a lot of rappers down here, a lot of musicians, a lot of musical artists. Just We just have a plethora of a lot of people. So when you, I'm not too much starstruck unless you can bring Luther from the grave and it just be him and all this kind of stuff. And then I'll be starstruck. <laughs> but other people really don't too much you know, starstruck me. They're people. Uh, and you're going to either like their personality or you're not going to like their personality. Just is what it is. But I said that to say this. I just love the way uh, Dr. Heavenly and uh, Quentin uh, came together and did a little excerpt for us on the recaps and reviews. And it was just like total professional. They were giving their viewpoints not to shade anybody or talk bad about anybody but they were just really likable and i liked it that's so kudos salute you dr heavenly as well as quentin maybe y'all need to do some work together because like i said y'all had me from the beginning to the end and i liked everything about it not like y'all say y'all were just connected because y'all agree on certain things because quentin was like no nah, i don't i don't agree with that or this that and the third and dr heavenly would come swing around and say well okay i can see your point about that but dr heavenly you just need to be a little bit more to yourself be who you are and that's it and Quentin has already found his lane because he's been doing this for a long time. He's a very talkable, likable person as well. So I know he's going to go far. He's just probably going to have to drop the Deneva act and go on as Quentin and solidify himself. Now, if he want to bring it up here and there, then that's okay. Because that's just like Tyler Perry. He played Medea for so long. Now he don't got tired of it. But that's what made him make his money. And, you know, I don't know. I can't see him putting that total to rest. But I can see why he want people to see him as Tyler Perry, the man. And the visions he's trying to um, 
acquire and this that and third and it's not all about Medea all the time so I do get it sometimes what's your bread and butter will always be your arch nemesis as well your Achilles heel or the thorn in your side but that's who you made it that's what people fell in love with so I guess in a sense you have to continue it until you get to another elevated level where you're like okay that y'all love that y'all have a, a vast amount of playbacks and, and, and tapes and CDs to go back and watch me but right now I'm going to do this for the remainder of my lifetime and people just have to respect that and continue to move on with you now I said it say this to get on into this article that uh, was written up by Urban Bell Mag magazine um, I guess it was a staff writer unless I can go okay i'm on page two again sometimes my, my hands get on my phone and just go haywire but of course none other than amanda anderson niles she was the article uh the journalist or correspondent for this particular article she put out through urban bell mag magazine.com go on over there and see them urban bell mag.com okay for all your entertainment news and if you can't get it there just wait on Dev chanel i'm sure i'm gonna come across something that you're gonna like you're gonna be one to talk about and you're gonna have your opportunity after the video has stopped and i ask you to go into the comment section and you're gonna get your grievance on okay not about me but the subject matter okay just saying okay but the title goes on to read that amanda niles brought out to us um married to medicine star dr heavenly says being friends with quad web is hard plus there's going to be a cash shakeup is coming because you know the reunion had ended Ugh, they should have just put that in two parts one just to get us teased and the second one just to take it home you know what i'm saying because breaking up in those three parts even andy got tired the last the third part of the reunion he's like i gotta go home my kids what quad is she knows she don't get that much time to be sitting there using the bathroom and wearing them difficult ensemble she has on ah, but anyway he was too fit to be tired he ready to go and i was right with him i was ready to go once it started rolling for uh season uh that season that they had seven and it was part three reunion i was tired too but anyway moving on it said married to medicine star dr heavenly um had a lot to say about the latest season on her youtube show she teamed up with funky dineva to recap all the drama including the reunion blow-ups and some very interesting things were said yes they were okay in particular having invented her frustrations about her friendship with quad well funky dineva did as well it appears both have similar feelings about their friend Heavenly also spilled some tea in regards to the next season. Apparently, a major cash shakeup is happening. And I'm here for it because I'm like, I don't know. Y'all get in them comments and tell me who y'all would like to see on the show, uh, continue to be on the show, and who needs to get the hell on out that door. Okay, me personally, Dr. Contessa and Buffy can fly right on out the door that they came in. You know what I'm saying? Don't pass. I just said, don't pass. Go. Shut the door. I don't want to see you no more. All right? Because Dr. Contessa is definitely a, a well-renowned physician out there. I don't know where, but, you know, she, she her claim to fame, she's a physician. If y'all want to look her up, go partake of her services, do so. I'm pretty sure she's very professional and very, uh, have a great bedside manner. But I, she just don't give me anything on the show. I'm like, how she even came around to, you know, getting in a discussion about she wanted to get her degree, this, that, and the thought. I mean, the storyline was just horrible, horrific. Making her look bad, making her husband look bad. And the whole scene just was just, I, I don't like it. I mean, I, I ended up liking her husband more so than her. And that tells a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm supposed to be there for the women. But Dr. Consulson would not let me be there for her. She wouldn't let me out. She wouldn't let me out. She had me in jail in my mind. Dr. Contessa had me in jail in my mind. She was just worrying me crazy. Worrying me crazy. Where's the sedation I needed before I go crazy? You know what I'm saying? That's how Contessa had me. I like, ugh. And then when she jumped on Buffy, out of nowhere, towards the end, when Buffy tried to console her, I was too fit to be tired. I like, uh, take her away. Tell, take her away, Lord. Take her away. She don't need to be on the show, okay? Next person I would like to see to go is Buffy. You know, I'm like, she's okay. She's a tax accountant. <coughs> She's very wealthy when it comes to her profession. This, that, third. Go and be great. Have babies. Maybe we could see you as a friend of a friend. But I don't want you on the show. It's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? You're not giving me nothing. You're whining about the people that you hang around. They don't like you because um, 
they, they can't um, get into your wealth. Your you, they haven't up uh, upgraded themselves to your level, and sometimes jealousies come out there and just that. I mean, you were just playing yourself too tight. And I'm like, girl, please, 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 shut up. Okay, so I didn't too much care for Buffy in that way. And then I mean, I gave her a reprieve there when Doctor Jacket had came out of nowhere and put her business on front street but like i tell people and i could tell you will continue to tell them if you don't want nothing say it don't say it don't let it slip from them lips of yours okay don't let it come up through your vocal cord your esophagus and let it come out your mouth don't do it don't do it don't do it okay keep it to yourself only the lord would know upstairs okay because he knew before you even came to a fruition of thinking about it all right so just keep it between you all don't keep it between somebody else that's, um, you know, a part of the world. I'm just saying. Because you're always going to get screwed up, messed up, and it's just going to be a total disaster. Now, I like what Mariah gives me. And she's supposed to be executive producer or some type of uh, up there in the hierarchy of this particular show. So, I guess we'll never get rid of her, even if we wanted to. So, But I like her. I like how she fussed and how the banter back and forth with Quad. Even though the stuff that they be bringing up, and I'm telling you, it's ancient. I mean, this is shit they be bringing up from 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And they try to make it relevant. And I'm like, what? What? Are you kidding me? I, I can't. I, I, I just truly can't. I can't understand. I can't fathom it. You're getting on my nerves. I want something that's less than a year old, six months preferably, and it's credible. Okay, that's what I want. And y'all can banter about it all day long, every every episode, whatever. But stuff that happened 10, 15, 20, 20 50 years ago, I could care less about it, okay? And both women should be able to care less about it as well. But again, it just is what it is, okay? And then we got Dr. Jackie over there. Who child. I guess she's just like the mama of the show. Okay. No rhyme, no reason. She's just there. But to me, she can exit out too. She can be a friend of the friend because Jackie wasn't really giving me nothing. It's just like she's the mediator. She has to plan everything. She has to try to get the women together. She has to fictitiously, fictitiously call herself wanting to reunite the uh, girls and put them together and let them play nice in the sandbox, which we already know ain't gonna happen it ain't happen on season one it ain't gonna happen in season eight just saying so pretty much dr jackie can boot it up on out there anyway because she was talking about before i uh, switch up or change all my friends this that and third i'd rather leave the show leave jackie leave girl leave i two-step you on out baby i two-step you on out because you're an author of a book you have a major lucrative um OBG, OBGYN business uh you're very well known in the community uh for philanthropy type work girl do something else than other than making yourself look stupid on this show i know it's great income i know it's great income and you're gonna still do what you want to do but it just is what it is ah i'm tired of seeing you jackie oh uh, let's see here toy you got a stake of toy you be giving me that low grade trashery middle class read and then try to be up on the upper scale trying to do stuff and, and you know she's just cute as a button she comes off very likable and just the stuff she gets herself into is just crazy okay but i enjoy her she makes me laugh and she keeps it real to a certain degree okay um i said mariah need to stay okay because I, I love to see Miss Lucy, her mama, act up, cut up, whatever. I don't have to see Lake no more. Lake don't give me anything. It's just like Portia on the Real Housewives of Atlanta when she tries to introduce Lauren. And I'm like, Lauren, she's not a part of the show, baby. She's your assistant. Then I found out through one of my family members, yes, I did. She even told me uh, that... I, now, maybe I was just naive. I'm just really not in tune with the show. I just like what I like, get what I get, and I go on about my business. But I thought Lauren and um, Portia had the same mother. I thought Diane was their mother. But my family member had to tell me on a family affair, no, mm-mm. Uh, Portia Williams' dad was spreading it low. Well, taking it low and spreading it wide. Okay, he was just having uh baby mama's all over the place so diane wasn't his first and damn sure one of his last okay they've got other siblings out there okay so it's the father that connects her or the dad that connects 
Portia and Lauren. So thank you, family, for telling me that. My family members be taking care of me because they know I don't be having no one I'm talking about when I get up on this too. And sometimes, and I think I said the eyes of the brothers in one of my, I was grooving, I was singing some music, but honey, come to find out it was the OJs. And you know me, you know your mama, your sister, however y'all look at me, your cousin, whatever, however y'all look at me when we at the house talking, fine. But I just went off the rafters. It was the OJs, not eyes the brothers. When I was doing that singing, don't ask me which video it was on the but when you see this video, video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's just how we get down. Uh, stay with me because I ab lib, I don't write anything down, it's just be coming off the top of my dome. So. If I said it's on camera, that's what I said, and I meant it. But to get me to go back and quote what I said, mm -mm, can't do it. <laughs> like, I plead the fifth, okay? Fifth, I got five on it, all right? But anyway, um, damn, where we were going then? So I forgot already. But yeah, I was just trying to do that correction. So, and I was just telling, giving y'all my spiel of who I felt needed to stay and who needed to get on out the door. Okay, let me go on and finish this article over here, too. So, I won't hold y'all too long. Because I'm 20 minutes in from what my um, computer is reading now here. But, yeah, uh, them, that's all I got. Dr. Simone, you know, of course she got to stay. Um, I don't know. who. Well, well yeah, she was kind of crazy, too. She, she, I don't know. She might can leave, too. But she can, Cecil can stay. <laughs> Cecil be getting on my nerves when he he's a good way of getting on my nerve, but he be just trying to get all the men in trouble. And I'm like, Cecil is just an instrument. He's just a little tantalizing little prankster over there. Now if you're gonna go when your wife told you not to go, but you're gonna go with him and hang out, have drinks and this, that and third, you know you can't hold your liquor or you can't hold your flirtatiousness when it comes to other women, then that ain't Cecil's fault. That is not Cecil's fault because these are all grown men. And I wish Dr. Heavenly just stop it. Uh, thinking that um, Cecil is this bad person <laughs> running around here trying to convince that Damien um, is pretty much what do you call it? It is it, following Cecil footsteps, but if Cecil wouldn't go out there and play Damien like that, Damien would be coming home acting crazy and this, that, and third. Cause he know she know uh, Cecil did this mess to her husband. I'm like, Doctor, heaven, sit your ass down, okay? Cause a man gonna be a man and a man all day, okay? And we just gonna have to put up with it, just like we as women are women every day, and we are gonna do what we want to do when we are gonna do it, okay? Same thing. But um, Doctor, heaven, just too controlling over there, and she just needs to stop it. Stop Stop in the name of love. Okay, just stop it. Okay, stop before you lose your love, Dr. Heavenly. Okay, but anyway, um, those are my picks that I feel that should definitely be able to leave and we get some new bread breed up here so we can get some new storylines going. Because, uh, I mean, some people want to get rid of Quad, and I understand because she's not with uh, Dr. G anymore. And she don't have a playmate to be going out with. And, yeah, I kind of understand that. But, you know, we have to keep in tune that she may get a playmate later on. You know, she may swim in a lady's pool, allegedly. Or she may go on and get her another man as a boyfriend. And, you know, we shouldn't want her to be getting married and all like that. Let her get to know somebody. Let, her, let us have at least two or three years with this person before she talking about wedding bills going to come back in. Because Kawhi need to solidify her money, first and foremost, before she get a hold of some other man's money and try to make like that's her money too okay don't flip like that half the time not the second time around okay secure your own bag then you'll know you'll know you'll know you'll know okay but let's get on back into this last and final part of the uh article that um miss niles had wrote up for us for our viewing pleasure it says dr heavenly Himes was called out by quad Webb for the comments she made about comment on the show while the women were in Kabul, they played a game. In the game, they discussed what celebrity men they would sleep with. When they got around to Quad, Heavenly bl blurted out Common's name. Then she said Quad already slept with him. This caused a lot of conversation on social media because Common recently appeared on the Sister Circle. So Quad felt like Heavenly comments were damaging to her professional reputation i'm like come on girl come on either you slept with the man or you didn't sleep with him personally my thoughts are you did sleep with him he's just a little hole running out there because everybody know that knows in them streets okay they have been following his career 
um, that he don't keep a woman for long. And it's always with the issue of him cheating. Okay. So could it be plausible that he slept with Quad? Hell yes. Could it be plausible that Quad told or leaked it to um, Dr. Hamlin? Oh, yes. Okay. Because they best buddies. They were tight like Frick and Fred. You know what I'm saying? Like paint. In the walls, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is, okay? But damaging, defamatory herself with comment, Quad couldn't get past door one because she know for a fact what actually went down. All right, uh, because Dr. Hell ain't gonna come out that that crazy and say shit like that. She be meaning what she say. She just try to clean it up when it don't go the way she thought it was going to go. Okay, but anyway, um. It goes on to say in a statement to BT Quad denied sleeping with Common and she slammed heavily, even questioning their friendship. Now see that's what I'm saying. Y'all already know how Dr. Helen get down. We all sit up there and talk amongst her. You know she take it in all in and she's gonna solidify herself when she need to use it. She's gonna spray y'all with y'all own tea down the road, of course, because it came out your mouth. All right, which made it the truth. Uh, basically when it comes to uh friendships, Dr. Uh, Heavenly as well as Funky Dineva, they both agreed that when the seats get too hot for Quad and you, you're putting her and placing her on her own shit and want her to take accountability for it, she does fly off the handle, she goes off radar and she does have a nasty spirit uh, with getting back with them. So that is plausible to say that yeah, they both have Quad's antics on point or on check. Okay, then it says during um, Dr. Heavenly's after show, she addressed this. She told Funky Dineva that Quad's comments were hurtful. Quad knew she was just joking, so it was hurtful for Quad to say Heavenly was tearing her down. Heavenly also said that being friends with Quad is hard because she holds grudges. And she's quick to say people aren't her real friends when they have a disagreement. Well, you know, just to just speak on that or to piggyback on it. Or give you my sidebar on it. Well, you know, hey, when you can't get people to be your yes people, yeah, you're going to have problems. And quite, you don't need yes people. You need people to stand firm in how they view you and uh, pick apart your actions if they're deemed negative and bring them back to your face to let you know this is not acceptable. I'm not going to be around you if you continue to act this way, okay? Because it's not good. It's not a good look. And you're not going to have me in your uh, fictitious, fake, fraudulent fuckery okay that's what i'm just saying i'm just giving it to you how i see it people all right so um then it says heavenly also said quad is too dramatic at times and she sometimes wonders if quad is being fake bunker Daniva agreed and said quad has hurt him in the past by questioning their friendship when they clash Mariah was also discussed. Both Heavenly and Funka Dineva said it's time for Quad and Mariah to make up. Now, on a sidebar on that note, no, they don't need to make up because they're never going to be friends. And it's true <laughs> on these streets, they don't like each other, okay? From past experiences, we will never know the truth of because they both say they got receipts out the wazooka, but nobody is willing to put them out there and just let have, okay? So, it is, is what it is. No, they don't need to make, make up. Because, hell, I don't believe nobody's friends on this show. Y'all just come to work. That's another job for y'all. And y'all give the uh, producers what they want. Y'all collect y'all check. And then y'all go on and live your lives. And that's pretty much how I see it. Okay? Um, I, pretty much all of these reality shows. Y'all not going to trip on me and say, that, oh, yeah, we friends in real life. And then y'all succumb to what the entertainment industry wants y'all to do when you know it's not kosher. It's not ladylike stuff, and it's not morally uh, appealing, but y'all do it anyway just to get that check, okay? So, hmm, did you sell your souls? Did you sell your souls? That's all I'm saying. But going back to the article, it says, Heavenly also confirmed that a major cash shakeup is in the works for the next season. Urban Bell can confirm this also, as we were informed weeks ago that producers are looking for new doctors and wives. And that means somebody got to go. And I already told you my pick. I already told y'all my pick. Dr. Contessa, Dr. Uh, Buffy need to go. She don't need to be a friend or show. Not really. Just go and live your best life. Have all the babies you want to have. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Uh... Buffy, uh, let me see. 
Well, hell, y'all know my uh, pics. I ain't gonna go back down that road, okay? If you didn't get them, rewind the video, and then you can figure out who I said that needs to get the hell on out the show, and we uh, 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 bid them adieu, okay? But I wanted to play a little clip of this Merit to Medicine interview that Quentin and Dr. Hevelin were a part of, just to give y'all a little taste here and there. Okay, here we go. Why don't I play it? Okay, and they said y'all had to watch the rest on Instagram, okay, to get that tea that they were spilling out on Dr. Heavenly's platform where she invited Funky Dineva, or Quentin, I would say, to come and do a review with her on the show. So, kudos to both of them. I applaud you all. Y'all did a fantastic job. Y'all had me from start to finish. I really much so enjoyed it. It was a two-sided type conversation uh, with great uh, eye-opening um information given to us about the cast and like i said it needs to be a shake-up child and it because you know quad already got really sister circle so if they put her off the show basis because she don't have a husband or, or uh, some type of professional man in her life uh that's in the medical field or whatnot i mean she had a good run on the show or whatnot but like i said dr jack i don't know. She need to go. Buffy need to go. Contessa need to go. Bam. There you three. Okay. But it just is what it is. Y'all get down in them comments. Y'all let me know who y'all think need to exit the door. See the door and lock it behind them so they won't be trying to get back in. Okay. <laughs> let me know down in the comments what y'all felt about what Dr. Heavenly and uh, Quentin was doing together. How did y'all like that camaraderie? And also pick your pick. So who you think need to be exited off the show. Okay, but that's all I have for this video. And always in part, we like to uh, say peace, soul, and I'll see you in this video. Love you guys. Bye-bye.